Hello, welcome everybody. Today we are in Unicum in Leiden on the club we give lessons, uh, by the way. And we're going to do the 11 biggest technical bandeja mistakes. And we're going to start right now. Vamos. The goal of the bandeja is that you play the ball in and that you use that shot to regain the net position. So the bandeja is mostly a shot that you play when you're moving backwards and not forwards so much. Um, and I wanted to highlight 11 mistakes that maybe you make and give you an exercise to help solve that mistake and to say what the correct technique is for the bandeja. One of the first mistakes is the bandeja preparation, like a bandeja, like the tray. So this is, for me, this is too open. So if I'm going to play the bandeja like this, I'm going to slice the ball too much. So I am a bigger fan of having it more 45 degrees, so more like this. Because now I can cut the ball more and I play more slice. With this one, I will play the ball way, way up. And it's confusing because you think bandeja and you say tray, then this is the tray, but this is way old school to play it like this. It's better to have it higher and 45 degrees. Mistake number two is having the preparation lower than the ball. So if the ball is here and a lot of players, they have it here. And that's mostly when the ball is deeper and deeper and deeper, they have to walk back and everything becomes lower and lower and lower. And if you hit that ball, you're going to play the ball up and you're gonna make a mistake because they have, your opponents have an easy ball and they can lob you play on your feet. So what you would rather have, and this is also a mistake with the left hand, if your left hand is higher, your right hand will also be higher. If your left hand is going on holiday, your right hand is going on holiday. So you need both arms up to have tension and then go down. To train this, it's the, the left hand is important because if I don't use my left hand, I will drop as well. So if I get the ball and the left hand goes down, so I'm here, I'm probably there. But if I do left hand up, I can play a better bandeja. So what you have to do is, somebody tosses you the ball and you catch with your left hand first and then you play the bandeja. So I catch, okay, second ball I hit. I do like I catch it and I play the bandeja. Very easy method, very fun. Uh, if you box the ball, it's also nice. Mistake number three, and that's having very late preparation or a very mo a moving preparation, a preparazione de spaghetti. So if you're late, you're never going to have a slow uh, shot. And mostly the bandeja is slower because you're moving backwards and you, need, you want to have a lot of control. So if you have a preparation that is already there and not moving, you can play fast and slow from one preparation and it's way easier to, to play the ball over the net and to play with different speeds, to play the ball where you want to play it. So this is crucial for me. This is, as a coach, what I work the most on, on the, what happens before you hit the ball. A good way to train this is to have the racket here, toss the ball up and play. So you learn to feel what it's like to start with a frozen preparation. Mistake number four, and that's a head first bandeja. So what a lot of players do is what I mean with head first, the head of the racket. So it's becoming more of this movement. So the ball comes down. So people try to use the wrist too much. And what you have to imagine, what works, I had a lot of success with people, to imagine that you're hitting with the grip first. Because now if I hit with the grip first towards the camera, I can slice the ball. But if I hit it with the head first, I'm going to play the ball flat and the ball comes up too much. If you have this and you find this confusing or comf uh, complicated, it's also easy to just play cross slow uh, into the corner and then it doesn't really matter so much. But if you really want to improve your bandeja, it's better to hit with the grip first. A good way to train this, this might be a little bit weird, is to toss the ball up and to hit the ball with the grip first. So try to hit the ball with the grip and to get the ball to the other side. And that will feel that you cut the ball a little bit more. Take number five is hitting the ball too close to your body. And this is what a lot of people want to do because they want to feel like they are in control. So if you are somebody that hits the ball close to your body, it's because most of the time you want to have a lot of control. You need to give a little bit, a little bit control away so you really want to move away from the ball. So what I had a lot of success with as a coach is that I uh, imagined a hoop. So I say, okay, imagine you're in a hoop. 
And every time you are preparing, you're inside the hoop, but every time you hit, especially with the bandeja, you have to hit outside your hoop. And that will make it easier. And I'll also give you some tips from the, for the footwork to have more space. So what you want to do is to have the right foot back to this side. So imagine I am on the serve of on the, before the middle line that I do this first and I move away. This happens a lot. If let's say I want to play the bandeja to the camera and I am here, because then I do this or I get the ball clo too close to me. So what I want to do is to have the right foot more there. So I get this angle because from here I can play the bandeja like this. So one of the first things I have to imagine is if I am on this, this part of the service box, when I play the bandeja, I have to move with my body and my right foot to this side to create this angle. So this is the key. And then I play the bandeja. The mistake is, is that I remain here. So let's say you play me the ball and I'm here and I'm going to... I cannot play the bandeja because this is very complicated. If I'm here, I can play the bandeja. So this is a good reference. So I'm here, I turn, bandeja, and I hold. Yep, so instead of missing the ball, instead of being here, you, cannot, you can never play bandeja. So it's always balls coming there, there. So if you hit the ball too close, you're probably also hitting the ball too high. So this is uh, a little bit of both. So the contact point depends on how far you are from the net. So if you are very close to the service line, you hit the ball higher. If you are close to the net, you hit the ball lower. So I would say above the head and head high. It's the in between that. Mistake number six is having a big swing or you go around the corner with the swing. And what I mean by that is that if you have a very big swing, it is very hard to slow down. And it's also easy for your opponents to see that you're going to play fast. If you're playing from this preparation, you can also play fast, in my opinion, from that. Oof, you see, I hit the, the fence with the ball. So um, it's still easy to play, or not easy, but it's still possible to play fast from a small preparation. If you make a big preparation, it's very hard to slow down. Also, the slice is something that, have, that you have to feel. And the further you are away from the ball, the harder it is to time. So the closer you are to the ball, the easier it is to have a correct timing. So if you make a lot of mistakes, make it smaller. And around the corner, I mean, is that you're going too far to the Vibora preparation. So too, too far here, because then you come around to the ball too much. The bandeja sometimes is easier. So now I have a lot of control. So the left hand is crucial to get it close to each other. So what I used a lot with people to practice is to put the left, to, to put the rope around the left wrist so the ball is coming. And this will help a lot to keep the swing small because it's mostly the left hand that is far. It's mostly this, so this goes uh, too far. And that's also a reason why you're stopping the arm. And you should never do that. Mistake number seven is not having the racket in the right playing direction. So let's say I want to play the ball to you. I want my racket aiming to you. And what a lot of players do is that that's why the Fibra might be confusing or more complicated sometimes, is that they are here. And I need to end with my swing here. So if you make a small swing or a big swing, and you have to switch last second, that's why you use the wrist too much in your swing. So what I would highly recommend to players from every single level is if you want to play the bandeja, imagine you want to hit the ball like this. So this is, or this is my end result. This is where I hit the ball. So when I prepare, I need to make sure that I don't have to do so much with the wrist. Because if this is correct, I can use my wrist. But if I am here, and I have to switch to this, I use the wrist too much. So this is why some coaches ask you to use your wrist and some ask you to not use your wrist because that uh, depends on what you need. It's not one form, but I would highly recommend to play it with less wrist because it's easier to time the ball. Mistake number eight is not having a continental grip. 
the continental grip is where you have your hand on the top. If it's like this, it's forehand. If it's like this, it's more backhand. So you feel the difference between this, you're gonna have a very open swing and you don't have a lot of control. And here, I'm less shaky, I have more firm grip. Because what is also important is when you play the bandeja, is that your wrist is not like this, but like this. Here, you are very strong. Here, you're loose. So if you slice, it's very difficult to slice. So if you're here, this is a big difference between this. So the continental grip will make it easy to be here because now I can open and I can slice. So if it's like this, I cannot, I don't have the same thing. So that's why also the continental grip will give you the best possible bandeja, even though if you're not in the continental grip, you can still play a bandeja, but it depends on how good you want to become. I can play a bandeja with the forehand grip, so I can still play it low. I just have to stop earlier and cannot use my wrist so much. So it's a different style. If you are super uncomfortable and you only play once a week, I would not even suggest to change your grip because it's not gonna happen so fast. So only if you play minimum two times a week and you are okay with making mistakes to get better, you will begin, become better. So even though it feels uncomfortable, and but you are able to accept the fact that you're going to make mistakes with the bandeja, with the new grip, with the continental grip, you will learn it. But if you don't feel like you're up to it, or you're not sure, or you play once a week, don't change your grip. Mistake number nine is using the wrist too much. We talked about it a little bit, but what we want to do is use the wrist to slice. We don't want to use the wrist to adjust at the, at the last moment. So this is one of the things. The second thing is that if we use the wrist, we have to use the rest as well. Because what a lot of players do is when they use the wrist, it's just the wrist that does something and they stop. The wrist works well, the sun is gonna shine. The, the wrist works well if you use everything because it's a kinetic chain. So if you do this and then you do that, it is a more natural movement and it's easy to control the ball. That I use the wrist a lot to generate power. And it's possible that it's good, but it's sometimes also that you just play so much slice, like uh, that is deaccelerating too much. So you can use your wrist, but then you have to use everything. So if I'm here, I'm, now I use everything. So I'm up, I'm up, and then it will be a very good bandeja because you use all the muscles in your body. Number 10 is no fluid motion. For me, super important. I don't know why I always say super important. Doesn't matter. It's super important because lately I have been doing some more coaching and this is where the bandeja goes wrong most of the time. Because if one is, slow and then is fast, everybody cannot play like a six. What I feel like is that everybody does like a six, one, six. Whew. So that's you don't want to do. Or like a six, six, six. There is no, no control. It feels stressed already. What you really have to learn is that you want to start with zero. So when you play the bandeja, at least zero, 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 six. That's way easier. Sometimes this is okay, so it's zero, 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 six, ten. Relax, because you want to do everything at the last second. This is why your bandeja is amazing or totally not so much, without any swear words. So what I would highly recommend, zero, 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 six. So what you can do is, um, Sasha is gonna play the ball, but I'm already waiting here, so I'm here. Yeah, and I play. So this will be a very good method to make it more fluid and also to give yourself the goal to end at your pocket. The last mistake, number 11, is no follow through. This is super important because I don't want you to get injured. If you stop the racket, so let's say you play and you stop, 
you need a lot of arm strength to stop the racket and that will cost you your arm. So what you have to do is when you play the bandeja is you have to blow out when you hit. So because then this will be a very good exercise to release the arm and to follow through all the way. The slice of the bandeja is something that happens when you are relaxed because your wrist if you strengthen your arm, so this is what you have to do now with me. If you strengthen your arm, play the bandeja with as much strength as possible. You see that I cannot do any, I don't use any of my small muscles. I only use my shoulder, so I get injured in my shoulder and I only use my triceps. Uh, but I'm not using my wrist and my underarm. If I'm relaxed, so let's say I'm, I end with the racket aiming to the back of the glass and then I will have a lot of slice, I don't have an injury, and I have one fluid motion. So this is key if you don't want to get injured, and this is key if you want to play a bandeja that is going to play in all the time. You need to dare to play it. A reason why you're stopping the motion is because you're coming from too far. So if you can start from closer to you, it is less likely that you stop the racket. So what you have to do is go from a small preparation to a long follow through and then you will have a very good bandeja, something that you can win the net with and then you just wait until you can move forwards and then you go for a more offensive shot. Now you know what you have to improve, let me know which one is the most important for you and I'll see you in the next episode. Hasta luego, ciao, adios.